Number 27. For the reaction A yields B plus C, the following data were obtained at 30 degrees Celsius. So we have a lovely chart here explaining that the changes in A's concentration, right, molarity's concentration, will give changes in the rate. And it seems like as you are increasing concentration, that rate is actually increasing. So it's following the general trend of if you have more concentration of something, the rate of a reaction will generally increase. That's not all the time though, but this is the general trend. Now for letter A, it says, what is the order of the reaction with respect to A and what is the rate law? Okay, so we have to find out the order with respect to A and we have to find the general rate law. Now, the actually we have to find the specific rate law for this equation uh, from the general rate law. And the general rate law is that, right? Rate equals K, whoa. Woo. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway, uh, that was some cool graphics. Uh, the general rate law is rate equals K times the concentration of the reactants raised to their specific orders. So let's write out the more specific one for our case, right? If we have a rate law, the only number that we really care about is the order value. So in this case, I can say that I have a rate equals K and by the way, K stands for Christina. Just kidding. K stands for the rate constant, which it seems like in B, we have to find that out. So we don't know what the rate constant is now, but that's okay. In our balanced equation, we only have one reactant, right? Reactants are on the, the left side. So this is gonna be K times the concentration of A raised to its exponent or the order, but we need to find that order, which means that we don't know what it is now. So I'm just gonna label it as X. You could label it as any value that you want. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the tables to find out what that X value is. And to do that, just know that for every uh, concentration and rate value, these are different trials or different experiments. So we have trial one, with this concentration and this rate, trial two with that concentration and that rate, and then trial three. Now we have to pick um, two trials to find out what the orders are because basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a ratio out of this formula. Now to make it easy for yourself, we're always gonna choose the higher rate value divided by the lower rate value. In this case, it does not matter, you know, what trials we pick, just as long as you have the higher one divided by the lower rate. And the rate values are these. So it does not matter. If you want to choose trial two over trial one, because this value, 9.99, is higher than 4.17, you could do that. You could do trial three over trial two, because 10 to the negative third always beats out of 10 to the negative fourth. And the same thing for trial three over trial one. Maybe um, what you should do is I'll pick one ratio and you pick another one. And let's see if our order at the end of the day is the same. So maybe what I'll do is I'll pick trial two over trial one. So if you wanna pick three over two or three over one, that's fine with me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do higher rate over the lower rate. So we're gonna do trial, trial two divided by trial one it just makes the, the math easier at the end of the day. Of course, you don't have to do higher over lower. If you're in a bind, just pick two of them. And the math, you know, using PEMDAS, you will get the same answer. The numbers might not be as pretty, but you will still get the same answer. So for trial two, I'm just gonna use this general formula to plug in for my trial two numbers. The rate that they gave me in trial two was 9.99 times 10 to the negative fourth equals the K value, we don't know what that is yet, but that's okay, times by the concentration of uh, the A value, which was the 0.356, right? And 
And with numbers, I mean, you can use brackets, but just know that, you know, when you're doing the math, this is the same thing as, you know, parentheses. It doesn't really matter. And that's going to be raised to the x value. We're going to do the same thing for trial 1. So now trial 1's values are 4.17 times 10 to the negative 4th equals the k value times by the values raised to the x, and the number for a for trial 1 is 0 0.230. Now why do we do this ratio? Well, a lot of things start canceling out, right? In this case, the k values cancel out. I don't know what the rate constant is, but it doesn't matter because they go bye-bye. K divided by K, it's the same, technically it's the same rate constant, so that goes bye-bye. And all we have to focus on is now doing the division between the rates and doing the division of your concentrations. So let's see, 9.99 times 10 to the negative fourth, 9.99 times 10 to the negative fourth, divided by 4.17 times 10 to the negative fourth. Oh boy, but don't get scared, right? Trust the process. Let's see where this is going. Usually they will give you a, you know, a whole number at the end, but in this case, oh boy, 2.396. But let's see what's going on on the other side. 0.356 divided by 0 0.230. Okay. 1 1.5, 1 1.5478, and that's going to be raised to the x value. Now, generally speaking, usually we would say 1.5478 raised to the x equals 2.396. What raised to that, you know, what a 1.5478 raised to what will get me this value? Now these are a little bit more challenging because it's not like 4 equals 2 to the x, right, or 9 equals 3 to the x. But we can still figure this out. Now if you want, we can either take this number and times by itself x amount of times to get to this, or we can use our rules for um, algebra, right? If you want to bring that x value down, all we have to do is use the ln which is the natural log button. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the ln of 1.5478. If you do that, that drops that x value down, and now it's in the same line as your numbers. And this will equal, if you, you have to be fair though, if you do it on the left side, you have to do it on the right side, 2.396. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these two values and find out the numbers. So ln of this number, I'm going to not round. So this would be 0 0.874. We'll just cut it as. And maybe what I'll do is I'll just bring this up here. And then let's do the ln of this. Okay, I got 0 0.468, uh, 43, no, 4369, we'll say, and that's now x. So what we're going to do is just divide on both sides by 0 0.4369, 0 0.4369, and we will get the answer, right? So we'll take this top number and divide by this value, right? Boop. Ah, now this is where we would round to a whole number. So we have x equals two. And that means that that x value that we just found out equals two. Wahoo. Okay, so now let's just uh, write the rate law. The rate law would be, I mean, Basically, we can just get rid of this, right, and just put a 2 here and call it a day for that. So we now have the, the specific rate law for us. No, I don't like that. We always highlight. So we always put the answer in a highlight, and we'll do green. We'll do green. 
Okay, so that's the first one. And now they said, what is the order with respect to A? The order, and maybe what I'll do is I'll just put this over here. And the order with respect to A is just that number, right? Order with respect to A is basically a fancy way for saying, what is A's order? Well, we just found out that A's exponent, which is the order, is second order. It's a number two. So that's the answer to the second part. Oh, yeah. And now we're moving on to B. So maybe what I'll do, let's see. Can I move this a little bit this way? Beautiful. Can I bring this down? If not, we might just get rid of it. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I'll just box this off. All right, so now, next part is, let's make a line. And now we're on part B. So for part B, we need to find the rate constant, which is K. Now this is different for different teachers or professors, right? I've seen that some teachers want you to get the K value for all three trials and then divide them by three to get the average K. That's a little bit overkill, in my opinion, right? Um, generally speaking, if you do, do find the rate constant for your trials, they should relatively be all the same. Um, some teachers or professors like you to use the last trial. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll choose the last trial just to show you that, hey, you know, we use trial one and two to find out the order, but you can use trial three to find the rate constant. If you want, uh, pick another trial just to, just to see if your K value will match mine. So now we just plug in the, the values for the rate constant. So rate equals K times A raised to the second. The rate for trial three was 2.44 times 10 to the negative third equals the K value times the concentration of A, which was for trial three, 0 0.557. So 0 0.557, and that's raised to the second. So um, 0.557 raised to the second I get that value. So 2.44 times 10 to the negative third equals 0 0.310, and that's times by K. And then just divide on both sides. 0 0.310, 0 0.310. Goodbye. And K equals some number, 2.44 times 10 to the negative third divided by 0.31. And there you go. Uh, maybe I'll put this into scientific notation. So 7.87 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, negative 3. But now the, the, tr the thing here is that depending on your order, your overall order, the K value units are going to change. So um, instead of trying to plug in units into your rate law and see what cancels out, I think it's easier to just memorize what K units go with what overall reaction. And I said overall, right? So that means that you have to find out the overall order. But this is pretty simple. Anytime that you want to find the overall order, it's just the sum. So we just add up all the orders. In this case, we only had one order because we only had one reactant. So it's a two. That means second order overall. And if you do have an overall order of two, your units of K will generally be molarity to the minus one and then time to the minus one. So you got both negative ones for your molarity and your time. Just pay attention to Nine times out of 10, they will give you molarity. But if they give you like ATM, just change this to ATM. So it'd be ATM to the minus one. Now go look for your time. The time is going to come from the rate unit. There's a, an S here, right? S stands for seconds. So in this case, the K value 
would be molarity to the minus one, because that's the unit that they gave us, and then it would be seconds to the minus one. So you could say S negative one or SEC negative one, but that's it. And we are done. We are done with this problem. Okay, kinetics. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. I love talking to you guys, and I try to get back to you as, as much as I can in my spare time. I hope you're doing well out there. Keep studying hard. Always keep learning. And thanks for being part of the community. Thanks for sticking to the end. Um, you guys are really, you know, really working hard. I'm so proud of you guys. And yeah, have a great day, okay? I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.